what I would like to do with this image um, in just a few minutes is show two different approaches to how to go about drawing this. Um, and to take a lot of the um, guesswork out of it, I'll just trace the image um, because that'll kind of highlight um, some aspects of of the process. So we're going to take a lot of hand-eye coordination out of it and just uh, go through. So what most people would do um, when they start to make an image is just go ahead and trace out the outline, the contour of a drawing. And as you go about it, you go through, trace all the features that you see, trace any um, landmark things on the surface, And generally what happens when you trace out things like this is you, of course, focus on the contour, right? Because these are what we perceive as the lines that make up the essential features of the face, right? If we go ahead and finish out the hairline and the neck, shoulders, and so on, Essentially what we've got here, if I move this over, is we've got the basic features of the face minus a second uh, part of the eye. So here, we'll undo that and finish out the eye real quick so that it looks like we've got the complete bit of the face. So this is one approach. And for most people, this is the approach that they take. Then, what most people do from here is, because there are sections of the contour that aren't good or correct, you would want to go through and start to fix those. Right? Like you want to fix the lip, because that's not correct. And then you go in, and you start refining the contour more and more and more. Right? Because the contour has to be perfect before you can get to the shading. I think this is kind of the way many people approach drawing. And it's unfortunately the way a lot of people approach teaching drawing. Because what happens is every time you make a pass through this, you increase emphasis on the contour. And when you increase emphasis on the contour, you begin to flatten out the image. Now, sometimes that's okay. If you want to create a flat image, that's fine. There are plenty of artistic styles uh, throughout history that have emphasized flatness, and there are plenty of people that do that now. Um, but I think most people feel limited because they want to create lifelike drawings with a good amount of depth in them. Right? And you get frustrated because you're like, well, I drew all the lines that I see. I don't see any more lines. Where do I go from here? From here, most people go directly to shading, right? You just go in and you start placing shadows wherever you see shadows, right? And that, of course, is kind of, um, is kind of frustrating in and of itself. Because then, you know, you still have the emphasis on flatness, but now it's shaded, right? And then if you have to go back and change something, you have to change everything, and you have to start the process over completely. And that's really frustrating, and you don't want that. So I think that this is where people get frustrated and, and get thrown off and then give up on drawing. And we don't want that to happen. 
I, you know, it's more fun to continue on with drawing and, and have a good time doing it than it is to give up too soon. So even with tracing, um, we'll, I can show you a different approach to that, and that's to focus on the forms. And when you use a reference like a photograph, yes, you can, um, you can still, um, use this reference, this, this, uh, image and more or less trace everything out large to small, but you don't have to be so addicted on the actual contour of everything. And I'll show you quickly how, how you can potentially go about that. So if we turn off our photo layer, we can start out with a very generic sort of thing. And then what we can loosely do is start to indicate where some of the forms are. And forms are dimensional, right? They're not about the contour, though the contour is there because there's a form. And so we can work loosely through emphasizing the forms that we see, and that's different. So drawing a lot of boring objects can help you create more lifelike figure drawings because you understand how form works and when you're using an object it stays still it's static um, doesn't it's not going anywhere so you can spend a long time studying it right and that's something that's different about people you know they move they live they breathe and your time with a model is you know necessarily limited so you can go through, take photos of the model, and then use the photo to kind of recreate some of the forms. This is a very difficult thing to do. And um, <coughs> because you kind of have to think about what the photo indicates as far as form goes and not be so addicted to what the, the photo, the result of the photo looks like um, immediately. So your focus has to be different, your mental focus has to be different. And then you have to start to add lines where you don't see lines, quote unquote. So when you turn off the reference photo, you begin to see a different approach to the figure than you do just by following contour, right? Something else is kind of happening with this sort of drawing. You start to see depth and form come out of it. And what I like to do is when I reach a certain point where I have most of the proportions kind of laid out, um, if I'm doing any kind of tracing, I like to then um, kind of give up on the um, on the tracing idea and then from this point on this drawing becomes about me injecting my own approach my own mark making the other thing the other functional thing is that when you're tracing over something you can't see all the lines you just did so now I have the layout and I can focus on the sort of the sort of elegance of line that I need I can draw out more of the forms and I can get specific about the corners of forms and where they go in space and so on. <coughs> and I've left out a lot of the um a lot of the guesswork from the process just by using technology. The analog way of doing this is called the uh the site size method drawing, and they do that in uh classical academy work. So this is like your modern classical academy approach, you know. And one of the coolest things about um, digital technology right now is that, you know, it doesn't matter what resolution or size the reference material is, you can upscale it, and then when you draw or paint, you can put it in whatever resolution that you want, right? You're not stuck with the resolution of the original image file. Um, one of the things that I like to do is 
use form following marks um, to kind of help show how forms progress in space. And you can use straight hatching or round hatching, it doesn't matter. As long as you do some kind of form following marks, <coughs> you're expressing a lot more information than you normally would be able to do. Right? So this too is a different process than you're probably normally used to seeing or using because you're no longer repeating outlines, right? You're seeing a form, you're a lot you're um, drawing out that form and then you're emphasizing the forms over and over again so that they kind of become more interesting as you go. So I enjoy this kind of approach to, to drawing um, because you're working in the way that a sculptor would almost work, right? You're, you're building dimension. It's as if the paper is this endless three-dimensional space and you're kind of just navigating it real easily and readily. So um, you can be a little bit more formulaic with the way that you create forms than this. Um, you can kind of make them a little bit more, um, a little bit more robotic, um, or a little bit more structured, or you can make them more organic, like I've done. Um, and what we're, what it kind of comes back to is that, you know, if you have that foundation in understanding form through drawing simple boxes like objects, you understand that when you draw a form and you put a form behind that form that they overlap and you understand how to take two different form types and reconcile them and stack them on each other. Essentially you're doing the necessary work of figure drawing um, or laying the groundwork to be able to do figure drawing. Um, <coughs> and then two, when you want to get to light here, you know how to go about it. You can um, use what's called the poster technique and everywhere the form changes direction, you kind of um, real simply change the value. Um, and um, I'll have to back up and undo a little bit because I went over some lines I didn't mean to. But you can go, one of the coolest things about doing this digitally now is that you can kind of go under your line work with um, value. And I like doing that because it preserves all of the search. And for me, I love seeing and I love showing the search that you went through to find forms. So this kind of method really quickly gives you a lot of information about form without a lot of work. Um, and I find that really, you know, fun and exciting. It's uh, and powerful too, it, and it happens quickly. And you can do this digital, you can do this analog, doesn't matter. Um, you know, it's just working digitally provides you with um, some different methods that you can use to kind of speed things up or um, change things and go back and make make changes without having to erase or anything like that. So um, what it boils down to is is a thought process and not necessarily technology because what happens is you go from thinking about shape and contour to thinking about form and space and that's a fundamental difference and I think when you shift in your thinking like that 
um, that a accelerates your learning process. And once you've fully shifted into thinking like that, you're, you know how to draw and you can draw anything from that point. 